Huh? You breathe. That's not fair. I haven't breathed yet. It's a lie. She's lying. I didn't breathe. What's up, Flick fans, and welcome to our review of the brand new horror film, Don't Breathe. In case you don't know how his reviews work, we're gonna give the good, the bad, and then we're gonna give you our scores. I'm Madison, and this is Austin. I see. Stop. So let's just get into it, Madison, and I'll start with you. What did you like about Don't Breathe? I thought the acting was really good. I thought the like the whole plot was actually kind of cool. It builds up and I thought for sure it was gonna get really cheesy at the end from where it was going, but it didn't. It didn't get cheesy, it was kind of cool. If you think about it, it's kind of a generic story, but in a way, the way that it was executed, they did a great job at building tension. That was probably my favorite part of the movie. Every now and then you would get a jump scare and I, I like when movies can execute jump scares to perfection and I think this one did a really good job because there weren't too many Right? Actually, you know what? I don't even consider this a horror film. I would say this is more of a thriller. Were That's you gonna what say I was going to say. Okay. Somebody singing Beyonce in the <laughs> hall. <laughs> but yeah, the tension building was honestly my favorite part of the movie. This director did a really good job with this. And he also directed, if I'm not mistaken, the remake of Evil Dead, which wasn't a great film, but I thought the directing was very, very impressive. And he brought even more of what he brought to that movie to Don't Breathe, and I believe he is the reason why this movie, in my opinion, is a success. I really like the ending. Without spoilers? I'm not spoiling, I said I like the ending. No spoilers! I don't even know if I can say it went different than I thought it was going to, because mm -hmm. I didn't know what was gonna happen. It's not a predictable movie for me, maybe some other people. No, I completely agree. The way that it throws these twists and turns at you, you don't expect it. Like, we both, we were, the whole entire movie, we were like, okay, this person's gonna die, that person doesn't die. The twists and the turns, I thought, were executed very, very well, and even some of the things that people could say, well, that's kind of cheesy, kind of kind of corny. It's the horror movie tropes. They were in here, they really were, but I just thought the execution was on point, the entire film. It's one of those throwback movies. It's a nice, small, contained story. It takes place in one location through most of the film, but it works. This movie just works. And we'll get into the bad in a minute, although there were some elements that were kind of, yeah, and you could say it could have been executed a little bit better. For the most part, the directing was on point, the acting was on point. Uh, speaking of points, do you have any more points? Um, yes. <laughs> Another thing that was really cool was, you saw it in the, the trailer, but when he turns the lights out oh. and that scene. You literally can see the pu their pupils. Oh, it's, it was and incredible. And it's just like, it looks really, like they're legitimately scared, frightened. Mm -hmm. Frightened! There have been some great horror films this year. We've had The Witch, we've had Lights Out, we've had The Conjuring 2. The scene of them walking in that pitch black, you can see the pupils in their eyes, just the way that it was filmed, it might be my favorite scene from a horror movie this year. The best part of the movie was definitely the old man. The old man was awesome. Stephen Lang, I thought his voice was really cool. She didn't love it. But the guy did an absolutely phenomenal job. Just the way that, if you don't know from the trailers, he's blind, so he can't see anything. The way that he performed in this role was absolutely incredible. The guy gives a heck of a performance. And uh, he makes this thriller, in a way, a horror film. He really does. So Madison, we've talked about the good. Let's talk about the bad. And go ahead, I know what you're about to say. I don't know if you consider it bad. I just, when the old man first started talking, I thought it was Bane. Like, <laughs> She compared it to Bane from Batman because he talks a little bit like this. Oh, yeah. wow. He does. He does sound like Bane <laughs> a little bit, yeah. And and she'll consider that a negative. I consider it a positive. I mean, it's going to be a very divisive thing in the movie, but it's it's cool, right? He <laughs> considered a positive. I guess if I was going to critique, I'd say it was just really long. I feel like it just kept going. And like you thought it was over and then it wasn't. And sometimes that's good in, in horror films, but... Yeah, there were, you could say that there were multiple endings to this movie because you would think it would end then it wouldn't end, then something would happen, you're like, oh, that's it, and then the scene would come fade up from black. It's like, 
you know, at, at a point you just want it to end, but I do think that the things that they continued to add were necessary, so I could give it that. I mean, necessary, they weren't like awful, like it didn't make me hate the movie. Mm -hmm. And in a way, you can look at some of these shots and the way that this horror film was, was made, you could say that, okay, this is somewhat of a generic horror film with the plot and just the way the characters were handled. You know who's gonna die first. One, because it was spoiled in the trailer. And two, because you can just tell. It's like things in a way were predictable when it came to the characters and whatnot, but once they get in the house and once the old man literally wakes up, that's when it becomes what this movie truly is, which is in my opinion, one of the best horror movies of the year. But really, the true star here is the director and he is the reason that I'm gonna give this movie the score that I'm gonna give it, but first, Madison, since we're going to score, I want to know what's your score. Okay, so like on a scale of horror movies, horror. I said that horror. Horror movies. Let's get that very clear. Horror. I'm saying <laughs> that you can't judge a horror movie on a freaking rom com. You gotta do it. No, you can't. Like that's impossible. I'm gonna base mine on a, like all the scary movies I've seen, and I guess better than Krampus, but. Um. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are better than Krampus. <laughs> no, okay, I guess I'd give it a mm, seven. Oh wait, is it like one to 100? One to 10. A oh, one to 10. One to 100, you give it a seven out of 100? I didn't finish Whoa. saying, I was gonna say 70 something. Okay, 7.7. Mm, seven. Yeah. I always like, I always think, for me, if I'm like, and would I ever see this movie again? You're, you don't have your go. score already? Oh my, no, Austin no, Burke doesn't have a score yet? You, you, you convinced, I was originally, I was gonna go 7.5. See, I don't do 7.7, 7.2. I go either oh, 0.5 or bust, 0.5 or bust. But uh, since we're going uh, 0.5 or bust here, I'm gonna say eight out of 10. I'm gonna say eight out of 10. Why are you looking at me like say eight that? out of 10. <laughs> I decided before we started this, I was like, I'm gonna go 7.5. But the more I think about the movie, the more stuff I like about it. I'm gonna say eight out of 10. I'm gonna say it's one of the best horror films. It's one of the best thrillers of the year. Guys, I really encourage you, what? go watch Don't Breathe. It, it is a great time at the movies. And with that, what's done is done. Nope, it's not we what we do. Are. That is not what we do. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, if you have anything to say about our review or if you've watched Don't Breathe yet, please leave it in the comment box below. I wanna start a conversation. How much did you like Don't Breathe? If you didn't enjoy it, let us know why in the nicest way possible. The internet is civil. If you like this video, please give that thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can. You don't have to, once again. I'm a loser! <laughs> Stop that. Be sure to follow me on all these social medias and check out our podcast at PopXCast. This weekend, we are doing the History of Comic Books Ooh, Part cool. 3. Actually, I'm doing it here in a couple of hours, so if you want to check that out, we have an iTunes place thingy, and we have a YouTube page, so please go to both of those and check us out. We do nerdy, geeky, comic booky things, and we also talk about cool stuff like Star Wars and horror films. I just talk so fast. But thanks again for watching, guys, and I will catch you later.